hopefully that will take us to go live. And it takes a lot of load. So good times. I think it's live. Okay, it says we're live now. Okay. Hi, welcome to the Branch of Laurel's interview. Um, my name is Ashaxi. I'm a member of the Order of the Laurel um, in the Kingdom of Montier. And tonight my guest is Sigismund Helmschmied, also known Hello. as Bryn, who is also a member of the Order of the Laurel from the Kingdom of Montier. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I usually start these out with asking about your SCA origin story. How did you find the SCA and what drew you in? Well, um, as a 17 year old kid, I was uh, very interested in art classes. I took a lot of art lessons and um, I actually stumbled across an SCA fighter practice at the school that I was taking some, uh, some, some uh, still life classes at. And I was hooked, I saw them fighting and I thought that was the most amazing thing ever to do. And I had never been moved by any um, you know, physical sports or anything, but I thought that was really quite cool. So I, uh, I immediately started making armor, which was horrible and awful. And I fought in it and I, I uh, very quickly uh, threw it away and began, <laughs> began on, <laughs> along with the lifelong career or the lifelong uh, occupation of wash, rinse and repeat, uh, making armor for myself. And then it turned into others. And now it's a lot of armor, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, the armor is amazing. Um, so how long did it take you to get into armor? You made it all yourself? Yes, um, well, I, when I first started, I actually started with uh, a, another, order, uh, another Laurel member, uh, Alaric Von Rodwell. His shop was in Southeast Portland at the time, and he, was, he, his, he and his parents were kind enough and generous enough to, uh, you know, a, a nerdy kid to let them come over and work in the shop. And it was a lot of fun. That was back in the days when Three Mountains had a, uh, an open armors night every Wednesday, every Thursday, one of those days. And so I, I, kind of, I kind of just fell into that crowd of, uh, or that pattern of just going to that every week. So it was a lot of fun. And was this like early 90s, late 80s? Yeah, it had to be, it had to be early 90s, late 80s. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I wanna say, I wanna say early, early 90s. Uh, 92, 93, something like that. Okay. That's, that feels right. That feels right. Um, yeah, a lot and of fun. Did you end up squiring to him or apprenticing to him or? Um, we did. We ended up, I ended up uh, becoming his, uh, his, his apprentice and uh, for, for time, for time his squire also. So that kind of, kind of fell into both, both roles there as I started building my skill set up and I also started fighting and you know how to uh moving along both of the paths that he was on too so kind of it kind of was a good fit at the time which is kind of a natural thing to do yeah yeah um so you've you do you still fight or have you stopped fighting now I I still fight I I haven't I mean even before even before all the the shutdown, I think it had been at least two years since I had fought, which is which is a long time, but it's not my longest. So, <laughs> not a good habit. I, I have I in as I've as I've become more and more focused on armor, my uh, fighting has become more and more spotty. I, I fight mostly to just uh, to kind of iron out kinks, maybe to develop something for someone else, a little bit to try to improve my own kit. I. I would shudder to show anyone my own, the state of my own armor right now, but. <laughs> but um, still like it, still, still, still the best, uh, the best physical activity ever. I, I love it. I love watching it too. Who's your favorite fighter to watch? Um, there's, there's been, there's been a lot of, I, you know what I, I don't ever go for one specific fighter, but uh, your husband and Sven, about seven years ago now, truly, true, at Ursulmus, pretty, pretty spectacular. Maybe it's even been longer. Maybe it's like eight years. Oh my gosh, one of the most beautiful two stick fights I've ever seen. 
<laughs> oh, I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Check out YouTube, people. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah. So, so you started making armor and you apprenticed to um, Alaric. Mm -hmm. And what kind of what kind of things were you making under him? What kind well, of work at the you time, doing? at the time, the um, <clears throat> The, the trend in armor, of course there are trends in armor, was to make armor that was resistant to Pacific Northwest weather. So it was all stainless. And I, I did a lot of a lot of work with stainless and I still have I still have a skill set that's, you know, a, a lot of it is focused on a, a way of working that was stainless. And as I've as I progressed through my armoring experience, I've realized that stainless is not good. <laughs> it's it, it's only virtue is that it's um is that it's it's rust resistant it it doesn't it doesn't quite hold up as good as it should for what we do i mean um there's metals now that that i could work with that are uh i don't want to say impervious to anything that the sca can can dish out on the field of combat but i'm just saying they would age better than any piece of stainless that i could make mm -hmm of the same of the same shape and and, and class so um there's just at the time I, I worked through gothic armor a lot of it was gothic stainless it was it was very difficult very labor intensive to produce it was very heavy too and um it actually was it was in its own way sort of a resistance training uh kind of armor it was so heavy i you know, to this day, I've, I've put it on a few times since then, you know, and of course I don't fit it anymore, but I can still get a sensibility for the weight and everything that uh, I used to fight in. And it's, it's not particularly, it's, it's heavy. It yeah. really is heavy. It's not, you know, the way that, the way that people fight now, it would be, it would be very clear that I was fighting an uphill battle against just what I was wearing. Or I just stick with it. So just way too cumbersome. Way too cumbersome. And then in, in hindsight, it was also built for an equestrian, equestrian armor. You know, a lot of gothic armor was very much focused on horse horse activity. So and it's harder to work than the metals that you're working now. It has its own Yeah. It, it, it is I don't know, you have to tell me. <laughs> well, you know, like like all modern metals, it's um, it's incredibly chemically or you know its composition is very uh, homogeneous, and um, it's also stainless steel is very sensitive to certain kinds of heating, and and it it likes to do you know when you bend a paperclip back and forth, and it, and that paperclip eventually breaks. Stainless steel is more prone to that kind of stress fracture mm -hmm. than than most other kinds of mild steel so um a lot of working actually tends to weaken it now there are ways to you know there are ways to back off that weakness but it's it's a it's a complex metal now all that said it, it welds it welds very nice it's very very hard to dish um it takes a lot of muscle and you know 17 year old me had no problem you know digging into thick pieces of stainless and you know not thinking about what you know 40 46 year old me would think of that so <laughs> um I, I won't say i took any damage from it but now thinking about having to work through some of the same thicknesses of metal that i once did would be i would just i would i would discourage my younger self lessons learned <laughs> yeah um so. so what do you work in mostly now um I'm trying to work in metals now that uh, I can get heat treated professionally. So I get them heat treated at um, at professional metallurgical plants that can do a very specific drawdown heat. I work in 4130, uh, 5160, and that's for blades, but 4130. Um, there's another there's another carbon steel that I work in too, but if I'm going to go for carbon steels, I'm going to go for the 4130, just because that's probably the the best performing uh, SC, for SCA purposes metal that I can think of, and it's what a lot of the other organizations are using too. So 
you know, Hema and Bo Hurt and Battle of the Nations, a lot of them like that same metal just because it's so springy, so resilient to so resilient to getting hit. And it just and for the purpose of SCA fighting, there's not a whole lot that any any guy can do to a piece of forty one thirty with the stick that's gonna make it, you know, break. It's just right. gonna be really hard. I mean, Rattan is never gonna is never gonna win over a piece of metal that's been heat treated. So So it's safest for your brains. It it is. I mean it's it's very and it's also going to last longest. I just think it's going to make people the happiest. And it's weird because I don't think people in the SCA have been fighting in it that long. But I think that, you know, if the sport, ten, you know, continues, it's going to be, it's going to become a favorite just because of its longevity. You know, it's, uh, it requires a little bit more attention. It requires the, you know, the, the metallurgical drawdown. You have to be able to heat it up and quench it in just the right way to make it to really get all that good properties from it but it's so worth it it's so worth it um and it you know from from my experiences so far it works almost exactly like mild steel so it has a little bit of difference maybe a little bit more hard a little mm -hmm. bit more uh, labor intensive but it's boy is it similar it's very similar and it and it in terms of effort to work it it's way better than stainless steel. So that's what you use for helmets? That's what I would use for everything. Okay. I've used it for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. okay. I've, used it, I, I've used it for gorgets. I've used it for helmets. And I've used it for one breastplate so far. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would use it for everything. You know, once, once that comes out of the, once that comes to, back from the heat treater it's so it's so hard it's so resilient it's great so awesome. um let's take a look at some of your work so that people have an idea of what we're talking about um and these are not in any particular order so can you see are you seeing pictures now i i do see them yeah okay um, so let's go to helmets. Let's get out of, okay. All right. So what's going on here? What is this? <laughs> so this is, um, this was made for, uh, Diego and Tarne. Um, this is, a, a it's called a turban helmet and it's from the golden caliphate, uh, era. And of course I've had to adapt it for SCA, SCA combat. So, um, and it's, it's actually an exception to the rule that I just, I was just talking about. It's actually, it's actually mild steel, but it's also been case hardened, which is a different process, uh, also makes it very, very hard. Um, it's, it, yeah, yeah, it's still out there. I think, uh, I think, I think that's still out there being fought with. I'm not sure. Wow. And are those, that just kind of blows my mind a little bit, all of the, um, I don't even know what to call them. <laughs> yeah, the li the lines. <laughs> yeah. So um, this one actually was kind of a complex, a kind of a complex process. Um, I had to scribe out all of the all of those little the, the little the little uh, raised areas and the uh, recessed areas, and I had to fill it with 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 pitch, and it's just a repoussé pitch, and then I can use I could use a hammer to you know, I say gently, but I was hitting it with all the strength I could muster. <laughs> I hit it into those grooves with uh, with chisels and with a hammer. And that slowly but surely uh, put in those incised grooves. And, and then the, uh, the finer level of or ornamentation is actually an acid etched, an acid etched decoration on top of it. And of course, that little, the little front finial piece is Pierce worked just using a jeweler's saw. Right so beautiful okay thank you and then i know this is not your work is it uh that's actually a collaborative work okay um, alaric alaric made that dome and uh if you look if you look in back of me once we get back to the screen i have that helmet here um and the grill work uh is a is a scythian ram which i um which i cut out because this helmet was supposed to be a uh, 
I can't remember the name of it. I think it was a Scythian or a Sarmatian helmet. Uh-huh. And it had these ram horns on it. And so I used the I used that twisted ram motif that the Scythians um, that's, that was seemed to be somewhat popular uh, with in that area, in that era and that culture. So uh, for the for the bar grill, which is just a laser perforated bar grill. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite helmets. I love this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, for reasons. For reasons. <laughs> Yeah. At the end. Um, okay, so, yeah. So this is another pair of helmets. Yeah, these are actually youth uh, youth armored combat helmets for um, for uh, youth armored combat, and they are a little bit thinner and a little bit lighter weight. But um, because of the the weapon specifications, I got to try some kind of cool things. I got to actually use. Uh, press block methoding uh, methods for making some of the ornamentation and uh, that's that was kind of fun so cool and there's a close-up of those whoops so uh, we can just talk about them as as we go instead of skipping okay. um whoops <laughs> let's go back <laughs> okay so this is you you don't just make helmets yeah yeah this is a this is a laurel circlet uh, this is a laurel circlet for um, Galron. Galron, thank you so much, Ashok. I would have forgotten his name. Uh, Galron. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, would have defaulted to his mon- mundane name. So yeah, Galron. It's Galron's laurelling circlet. Uh, still, every once in a while, I see him wear it. it. Makes me happy to see it on his head. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. And these are bazubans. These are bazubans. They're um, they're based off of they're based off of a. I, I want to say they are from the um, from the Yuan Dynasty Chinese, but they are actually in a book from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, Arms and Armor of the Himalayas. Really, really wonderful book. But you can if you if you open up that book, you'll see that same design uh in that book and of course i just i just lifted that metal work right out of the right out of the book and then incorporate them into these into these into this piece a lot of fun making those though. 15th century italian warhammer <laughs> fun it, project it's got all kinds of scroll work on here it's kind of hard to see on the screen but yeah, yeah, it was. It actually, you know, to you know, as I'm sitting here looking at, it, I'm going, "Wow, I, I could, I should have etched that deeper. I should have used some more, uh, some more uh, contrasting uh, metal stains there." Yeah, because you always see the flaws in your work. Oh my gosh, it's totally see. Yeah, there that that's that's the last stainless steel helmet that I ever made. Wow, lots of fun there. You know, that's actually my first, also my first. Uh, my first etching in stainless steel, which I, I didn't think was possible until about a month before that actually manifested itself. So kind of a cool one. And I had a lot of fun making that one too. It's a nice bone voyage to stainless steel. <laughs> so I, I recently, and I say recently, for the last few years, I've been playing around with casting in bronze, and I've found that uh, I've I've found that it's enormously an enormously cool discipline to add to to metal. As soon as you start mixing the medium, uh, I think things start becoming more interesting. And I, this helmet was one of those uh, was one of those first 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 forays into casting and again um i'm just doing the artwork on this and other people are actually doing the uh, difficult technical part of pouring the bronze and um all that sort of stuff i just get them back and clean it up and fit it to the helmet so so are you carving the pieces or are you just yeah. drawing? okay yeah. i'm 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 doing i'm doing the wax the wax carving so um, I find the wax carving is uh, 
it's a little bit more up my alley. It's kind of a design exercise. It's planning. It's um, it's just sitting down with the small tools and really digging into the details of the thing. And I get to dodge the responsibility of having a very heavy crucible filled with very, very hot liquid metal <laughs> anywhere near me. So that said, um, of late, I have actually started to pour my own bronze. So even though I, I poured no bronze on this helmet, um, my the, the attempts that came after it, I've done a lot of work on. So I love but everything. I love the layers of design here, the the kind of animal figure here, and then the, it's just, it's got layers, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I see layers in period pieces a lot. And so, you know, I, I have to make concessions to the SCA and the SCA rules, but I feel like I can at least bring some of that design aesthetic to the process, so. And that's the same helmet. Yep. So another collaborative piece here, that's uh, that's an onion dome bassinet by uh, Master Ugo. And um, he was he was getting it ready to hand off to uh, Philip de Mantel and they wanted to get a more um, uh, more easy to fight in grill. Uh, originally had a very authentic medieval grill with a very narrow eye slot, uh, completely covered it, his face, no, uh, no easy breaths to be had in that, in that visor. And so this visor went in place, um, that little toggle on top, you can just flip it over and the whole visor comes off. So he could, he can theoretically swap in between this visor and a full face visor, which is a little bit more authentic to that style of helmet. Wow. And that's the same piece? Yep. Okay. Yep. Same visor. So this is actually the uh, one of the first one of the first full armor etches that I did. Um, I didn't make that helmet. I augmented that helmet with a new visor, a new grill, um, and that and that uh, that that uh, gorget. Uh, the breastplate is me. And again, this is all this is all just hardened mild steel. So this is also etched throughout the entire entirety. Of course, I was making it for uh, another member of our order, uh, a musician and a knight. And so if we got close to this, we, we would see that that etching is all weapons and musical instruments sort of in, in keeping with his uh, expertise. I think you can kind of see the there's a loot here and something else there. A sword and a shield, I think. Mm. Like that. And some that. of my first castings. <laughs> <laughs> Pelican medallion. Yep. So he also asked, as soon as I was finished with that helmet, he asked for a shield boss that might work with it just to kind of bring his whole ensemble together. And so I built that shield boss uh, based on some Anglo-Saxon, Anglo-Saxon, uh, you know, a, a, an Anglo-Saxon look and feel, I'll say, because it's very much, it's very much my own interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an Ugo one. Oh, actually, no, that's mine. That's mine. Yeah, yeah, that's just a, that's a ring. It says Factore, which um, in Latin is maker. I still have one of those around here somewhere. I need to wear it more often. <laughs> Unfortunately, buffing compound gets stuck in it horribly. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's another shot of. Yeah, another, another turban helmet. Um, this one also, actually, uh, this one was another stainless steel. Uh, I also had to go to a very humid environment, so yeah. And this and one also. I, go ahead. That? Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say. I was just going to say this one had a little bit of a. These. This one was a little bit of a different technique, just because it was kind of a, a complex piece to work. So again, stainless steel being really, 
really difficult to work in the same way that mild steel and 4130 uh, is able to get work. And is this piece laser cut too, like the um, the face face? It's funny. I um, I did get the laser. the the uh, little The little finial up top and the visor are um, are laser cut. But that vi but that uh, that rim right up front and center there is yeah. hand cut. Oh wow! Okay. I I I botched part of it. It was kind of a complex thing to cut. It took a long time to do. <laughs> and just again, uh, uh, you know, probably 100, 100, and, 100 and change jeweler saw blades went into getting that. The, the profile of that helmet wasn't like completely round. So I had to, I, I, I did have one laser cut and it did not fit. It didn't work uh -huh. because it was just a perfect, a perfect uh, mirror image. Right. Um, so I had to kind of, I had to kind of back off of that idea and come back and make something that's a little bit more. Uh, unique to that helmet shape. So, wow. and these chainmail um, are these ba is this Bane's work? Um, I I can't remember. Um, okay. I don't I don't think it was on that one because it had to be stainless steel. So he ended oh, okay. up with titanium, a titanium um, chainmail, and I believe that's Master Newt. And he, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, welded link ch chainmail from Master Newt. There's another shot of it. So pretty. Wow. I'm still proud of that little horsehair top knot. That was very cool. That comes off for fighting. <laughs> Let's go back and look at it. There you go. So that just does it, does it unscrew or how does it come yeah. off? Yeah. Yeah, he could he could just reach up there with a few little screws. He could pop it off for going onto the list going onto the list field. So wow. County coronets. Yeah, so this one actually is, um, this one's actually kind of a, an homage to another uh, style of helmet that was kind of, it's kind of huge back in the was it late 80s, Torgal. Mm -hmm. uh, Torgal was, uh, Torgal Steingrimson, who was, uh, a uh, prolific helmet maker back then made made helmets that kind of looked and felt like this. And the um, the guy who I made this for really really wanted one, but never had a chance back when back when Torgal was making helmets to uh, get one. So I kind of made this one as an homage to the good old days of helmets in the early SCA. So. And this is the same. Yep. And that's castings that I did too. So those eyebrows and that little dragon, dragon on the nasal, dragon head on the nasal, that's all me, so. Huh, I uploaded a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, I've gotten better about taking, taking lots of pictures now. So <laughs> the ones that are more recent are gonna have better documentation. Oh, and another, another golden caliphate out there. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, that one. That one didn't. That one had a, um, a face, two face, two face grills with it as well. So, that one is the bar grill, easy to breathe through, SCA legal bar grill. And then, the second one was a full face grill, with the repoussade mustache and all that sort of stuff. So. I think I might have a picture of that, but we'll we'll come across it later. Okay. I love how this grill um, reflects some of those Anglo-Saxon pieces. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping got across. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have a sophisticated audience in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful piece. Yeah, that one I, I, I've seen it out on the field a few times, and every time I, I feel a little, a little pitter pat in my heart that I had something to do with that. So, <laughs> lots of the fun. Yeah, so this one's this one's sort that one was sort of my take on a, a Prince Yaroslav helmet, Russian style. Mm -hmm. Kind of my own my own riff on the theme. 
Beautiful. And that's the latest one that I just made for Sphere. Sorry, these aren't in order. No, that's okay. That one, that one's another Russian helmet, although a little bit later period. I the the again the grill work on this just. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I really like the way that one came out. I I did have to dig deep. That is a very old motif on there. It's not a, it's not something that would be necessarily contemporary with that with that helmet, but the you know the ancestors of the of the Rus might have might have uh, had those hanging around on their ceramics and maybe on some textiles too. So, and that's another place where a lot of stuff comes from is textiles and yeah. pottery. Another bassinet, an early bassinet. Um, one of probably the, I want to say that's the second or third time I'd used uh, any kind of CNC grill work cutting. And that one actually was cut with a, with a water jet and not a laser and kind of a, kind of a fun, uh, a fun early uh, essay in the graph. Now that one also is uh, Matthias Bain doing all the chain mail by hand. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful piece of chain mail that was. I really, really liked watching that go on there. Made the whole thing come together. Sven's a lucky guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, and, there's, and there's Bain's helmet. Yeah. One of, one of my favorites. And that's a collaborative work with Ugo. He built the uh, steel shell and I, I helped him out getting all the brass work laid out and uh, all that fun stuff on there. So let's talk about how you collaborate with him because I, I when I hear people talk about armorers, a lot of people refer to you as his student and that's not really the dynamic of your relationship. You know, I don't, I don't think I don't think of it as that a lot of the time. I know this much. He and I share some aesthetic, um, some aesthetic preferences when it comes to armor. We both know that bar grills are kind of um, are kind of a necessary evil, and so we both tend to want to, you know, ornament our helmets in a way that kind of minimizes that, and that might give us. Uh, you know, might give us a better a better look for our work and mm -hmm. so I don't I, I learn things from Ugo and I like to think uh, Ugo learns things from me so it's definitely a back and forth um, yeah, I is, think from the outside you guys have this like beautiful symbiosis of just like your your um, aesthetics complement each other so well um, well, thank you. Thank you. Having having someone that you can work with like that is is a gift. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. I I really think that the best work that happens in the SCA doesn't, you know, it uh, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. You know, um, it's it's a an interaction with resources and with actual real things that are around you and with the people who are around you too. So. Yeah. And that one's uh, Rodrigo's, probably the the first the first helmet that I did with uh, a laser cut or with a uh, water jet cut grill, and uh, one where I had basically begun to realize that stainless steel was not the way. <laughs> so, bits and pieces. It's a, a, a refurb for John Wolfstan. Uh, some design design drawings, of course. <laughs> Oh, that's an old laurel medallion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very old. I just kind of stalked your Facebook and mined everything I could. Yeah. yeah. This is a beautiful piece. I. Yeah, that's uh, Duchess Duchess Tiana's circlet. Oh, okay. That's one of the ones. You know, every once in a while, something another collaborative piece again with. Uh, with Duke Steercar, those those small in inlaid uh, or inside black panels are actually uh, uh, damascened silver and gold. Wow. And he, he made those. Um, I, that one, that one's one of those ones really special, you know, you, you get it and it's, it's quite wonderful in your hand and you always wonder like, 
boy, this is one of those ones I would like back just, just so I could, just so I could look at it, you know, just so I could have it in the room. It's a lot of, it was a lot of fun to make it. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that one. It came out great, great really good. I'm, I'm happy with it. And sometimes just seeing them again is like, oh. <laughs> yeah, right. You have things like that you're proud of that you see again and you're like, oh, that, that came out really nice. I'm proud I, of that. I get really happy to see all of the regalia I've made and use. Right. Um, some of it I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, I need to remake that because that is, you know, 20 years old and it's it's um, got some yeah I, i'm embarrassed by that but it's still in use and it's still together and that's kind of a big deal so and people love it do you, do you feel like that like you feel that sense of accomplishment when somebody really likes it you know yeah and, they... yeah. and then i've also had times where i like i went up to Sydney once and um she was wearing this apron dress i'm like oh i really love how that's put together i, I love the design work here and and she goes well you made it <laughs> like oh I didn't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that was embarrassing. Yeah. So you forget what you've made, or at least I do. Yeah. No, I I do too. There's some real. There's some. There's some very ancient helmets out there that I made. I don't take credit for them. <laughs> I I want to forget them. So these, are the, of these are the these are the Terra baronial circlets, right? Yep. Yep. Oh, and then this piece. And that one, that one is, is actually a really fun departure Oops. because she didn't she didn't want she didn't need necessarily something hyper authentically medieval. So we got to do this kind of art nouveau. We got to do some kind of like um some some very naturalistic creatures. So there's spiders and bats and all sorts of fun stuff on the circlet. And I wish I had better pictures of it. This is a joint project with Ugo, right? Yes. Yeah. Another another joint project. That's a beautiful piece. Yeah. Francis Darcy's laureling medallion. <laughs> Crowns of the West. And that that's is that a joint project? Uh, yeah, that was a joint project. That was a joint project. Um, there's more pictures that, than that. We can come back to. Yeah, that. Uh, master defense, and a memorial ring for uh, Duke Skeggy. There's that helmet again. We're back, and we're back to the number one. Oh, yep. Okay, we didn't talk about this. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that was my first experiment with a stamp. <laughs> that was my first ever like, uh, I made a stamp, and so I just went nuts with it on a piece of copper. I think I gave it away for some. It said it was for a Trigby, Trigby's prize tournament. There you go. That was it. Okay. I think we talked about all of this now. So I'm going to stop yep. sharing. There we go. We're back. <laughs> so that's really awesome. I My husband fights in one of your helmets that is probably, I don't know, it's not fancy, but you remember that thing he used to fight in? Yes. <laughs> yes. His, Thank you. His for... helmet's not fantasy. I was trying very hard. Some, I think it had to be 12, 12 or 13 years ago now. I was trying very hard to do a uh, Scythian uh, helmet called the, it's from the, I think I want to call it the Gur region. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. it was a very simple round top. Very, it had a very low, low brim. Yeah. Um, just a very simple bowl. It was a, it was a cool helmet. Um, I, I love it. I, I didn't. I didn't say it's fantasy. I said it's not fancy. Not fancy. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> but it's so much better yeah, than no, that rusted out snaggle tooth thing that he had. Yep. And he can leave that in his car, his car trunk, which was a big priority for me back in the day. Like you have to be able to leave your armor in a car trunk. Now, yeah. if you leave, if you leave my armor in your car trunk, it would be very sad. <laughs> And after dropping the kind of money that you have to drop on armor these days, doing that is just yep. dumb anyway. Yep, yep. <laughs> should be it should be displayed just like your uh, just like your garb back there on a stand in your house. It likes to live where you are <laughs> because it's art. <clears throat> so exactly. what do you have behind you there? Well, 
I think you probably remember recognize some of these. This one is um, this one is uh, Sir Matthias's. Now this one is actually plastic. Oh wow! It's a, res it's a resin copy that we had made because we were me and Hugo did not want to part with it. We both loved it, so we both have one of these helmets sitting on our shelves. Um, we've got Sir Justin's. Sir Justin's. Sir Justin's helmet has come back for repairs. Behold the starburst of shame. It's very bent up. I'm going to fix you. Don't don't worry. Goodbye. <laughs> and and since uh, William of the battered helmet, or he he actually gave he actually gave this back to me. I'm holding it in trust for some as of yet unfinished part unfinished day in the future i had it heat treated and it, it did it had a very sketchy interaction with heat treating it's just mild steel so i had to fix it uh, i love it it sits on a shelf but one of my favorites one of my i, I drew this horn profile for alaric and yeah. alaric took it and he made this on there so seeing this is kind of like that's a, a fun little factoid I, I was in architecture school and i was studying the uh, I was studying the golden section. So this is a product of my architectural background creeping into some armor, so. Cool. And that used to be Atias's. Yes, and Atias gave it to William because his device was a ram. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think Atias was just looking for other direction and he wanted a different helmet. There were other, other things that he wanted to try out. So yeah. Other things, I just, I just cast up this, it's a dagger. Wow. Super fun. Nice. And the blade is by a local a local boy, Nikolai, Nicholas Grendel. So lots of fun stuff. And of course, I have I have one of uh, Hugo's Shivonas. Wow. So put your hand in it. Little slice nice. of sixteenth little slice of sixteenth century Italy right there. <laughs> That's really pretty. Another cast pommel. We built. I, I, I'm. I'm happy to say that I successfully casted that pommel in bronze. So. Wow. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Very cool. And you and Ugo also worked on the. I don't know. I thought I pulled them, but I didn't. The Avacal crowns. Yep, Avacal crowns. Ontier's travel crowns. Um, the Avacal air crowns. You saw uh, the. Uh, the Prince and Princess for Avacal. Those mm -hmm. were those uh, brass ones. They were kind of a, just a, a quick quick essay just to get them something in. And they they were very well received. Um, we uh, ended up we ended up doing another set of uh, folding crowns for them too. Actually, that was a solo effort on my part. I built those. So awesome. I think they're on Facebook too somewhere. Yeah, I, I thought I pulled more than I did. I'm sorry about that. Um, nah, and then- there's a southern kingdom that has those really big ones. Didn't you? Did you work on those? Yeah, on Siora. Yeah. On Siora. Yeah, that was that was another collaborative uh, another collaborative venture there. Um, I was mostly just shop assistant for that. So there's a lot of a lot of like wash, rinse, and repeat to do with those because it was so many little pieces and yeah. just it was just a big repeating pattern. So I kind of just. I was just a shop assistant for the end of that. We, uh, kind of assembly line it up. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So do, doing the jewel, doing some of the stone setting, um, swearing at it. <laughs> yeah. So let's. I love that. Huh? Nothing. What's oh. up? <laughs> let's circle back. Um, how long did you play before um, you were recognized with a, a laurel? Do you, do you know? Um, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I was I was laureled in 2008. Okay. So I want to say it's about 20 years. Holy something cow. like that. No. Yeah. So not 92. <clears throat> no, no, no. Less than that. Thir 13, 14 years. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, A long I'm time. Bad at, I'm bad at mathing. Yeah. But 2008. I was laureled in 2008. By Amalric and Kaya. 
that's right. That's a right. dragon spear. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't know. Was it was the laurel something you ever aspired to, or were you just really more all about making armor? You know, I I had always thought of the laurel as as something as something nice to have. Um, I was I was I was never I was never hungry for it, and it was a surprise to get it. And I still wonder if I'm worthy of it sometimes because I see some some. I, I tell you, I I tell you, I see some some of the things that other people make, and I am constantly amazed by it. I know I'm showing you all this armor and swords and stuff. I just just today held a Torgal sword that just it melts my brain. It's so good. I, you know, I was like, I'm not in the same league as some of these people. And, you know, if I cross disciplines, there's some miraculous things out there that just never fail to impress me across the entire spectrum of things that get done inside of the order. So it's amazing. I feel the same way. Um, I think it took me like eight years to even feel comfortable saying that I was a Laurel. I would be like, I'm a Laurel. <laughs> you know? yeah. So silly. Well deserved. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Um, so is it, it's kind of weird philosophical peerage questions, but is it different than you thought it would be being a Laurel? Um, it, it is a little bit. I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't mentally prepared for the deference that some people give laurels. It's, um, it's, an, it's an enormous honor. It's always flattering. I'm always thankful and I always, I always try to be as gracious with you know, any information as I can because of that. I, I feel sort of a, a duty to you know, put, put the information out there, let it grow however it will. Do so. you have, do you have regular students now that come and work with you and? Um, I, I did, I have, I had a couple of students that were somewhat regular. Um, they, they, they've been hit and miss. Of course, that, that, the thing about armor is it's not something that you can do without your own, your own space to do it and your own set of tools. And so you really have to have someone to work with have someone to coach you through some things and hold your hand through stuff. And uh, not everyone has it, but, you know, I think the the interest is still there. Um, they come down when they can. Of course, they haven't come down recently, of course, with the yeah. recent things going on. <laughs> Everything on hold. <laughs> yes. This is as um, close as we can get now. <laughs> yep. This is as good as it gets. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Me too. I set up my pavilion for this meeting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the best background. It makes me want to go, go set up my yurt and try our backyard. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a basement. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have a little break. <laughs> it's nice to have a break from the inside. It's kind of yeah. fun. Kind of fun putting this up. I, I realize I have a. A summertime, a summertime smell association with the smell of Sun Forger canvas. Totally. The smell of that canvas in my nose. That's that's a summer thing. <laughs> Grass getting ruffled up. That's another one. <laughs> <laughs> and the kind of, well, all of my bedding kind of smells like plastic bins. So that's a smell too. What did she say? Oh, my Brad, he posted some crowns. Oh, okay. Yes, my my okay. student Radomir Radomir Kolikov has graciously possibly posted some things. <laughs> I just realized I haven't been looking at the comments at all, and I should do that because people might have questions. <laughs> oh, do they have questions? I don't know. I'm looking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see. With the introduction of um, rebated steel fighting in the SCA, will you need to change the type of armor that you make? I believe I will not. If I continue to use 4130, 
it's a steel that's proven it's it's proven its stuff in uh bohurt and it's proven its stuff in um battle of the nations uh that said rebated steel will eventually take its toll on the metal of helmets eventually there's just going to be a slow slow and steady attrition between something that's coming in it's got a lot of energy and a surface that's there just to take take up the slack take up the flack <laughs> so people are going to have to really monitor their gear i believe that they will have to monitor in a different way right. um it's it's going to be a different it's going to be a different sport if people decide that they want to go in that direction but 4130 is a standard a standard metal in in these other sports and it's done okay it's done okay now their weapon specifications are new thing to me like if i if i was asked to produce a rebated steel sword right now i'd have to do a lot of research and it would definitely take some time and some energy so right big learning curve with that absolutely mm. what um what what's on your plate now what's your next big project well um let's see we've got we've got really we've got we've got three projects that are kind of um ramping up there's a uh, a fighter uh hamar i can't remember his last name hamar uh, I've I just just got a commission from him. I'm working on that. I've got a helmet for Leith O'Bannon that's uh, way overdue. I've got uh, another and an another helmet for Wayland Middleson that I'm also working on. So awesome! So you're keeping busy in these times. Yes, there is a lot to keep busy with. It's 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 both heartening to know that people are still imagining themselves as the heroes that they are going to become <laughs> and uh and that they're still reaching out to me to uh help them get there yeah so, it's huge um <clears throat> so i um i want I, I, I you haven't really watched any of these interviews yet um when my sister does her duple interviews she does kind of a final 10 questions yeah. And with the Laurel interviews, I haven't been doing that and they've ended up like ending really abruptly. And so I want to start doing um, like a final four questions. Okay. So um, if there isn't anything else that you want to talk about, we can we can go into those. Sounds good. Okay. So um, if money was no object, um, what tool would you buy or what material would you would you work with? If money was no object, material okay so I'll, I'll 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 say there's two things that i would like to do i would like to work i would like to work with authentic bloomery steel which is the pre bessemer method steel where they do this huge pit fire and all this steel drops down into this big wad and they beat that out into sheets and that becomes armor it's the way that real authentic armor was made before the industrial revolution made steel this ubiquitous thing in our lives. Right. Um, the tool that I would like to use, uh, the tool that I would like to use, there's some really wonderful pneumatic pneumatic dishing tools out there that will be really, really fun. Um, yeah, yeah. A press, a massive press. <laughs> One of those huge ones. Just see if we can do like a single stamp the way that the united states military makes helmets see if, see if that works i don't know Gunk. <laughs> oh, exactly and then you would have a billion canvases to make beautiful exactly we could we would, we would see how, how much we could how much we could make how much what we could do with uh with a uh, with that kind of uh mass production <laughs> <laughs> make the whole world beautiful that's right um, same um, in the same vein, um, money's no object. Um, what museum or location would you like to travel to to see something or learn more? Any of them. So here's a here's an unfortunate an unfortunate fact of being an American and not having traveled abroad, having expired passports still. Um, mm -hmm. I've never actually I, I've only seen 
a, a few pieces of medieval armor in my whole life, like real authentic articles. And I've never, I've never been to Europe. So uh, I would like to go to Europe. If I had to pick a specific place, I would like to go to the um, Kunstdistorsches in Vienna, in Vienna. I would like to go to the Armeria Real in Spain. I would like to go to the Tower of London. Um, I would like to go to the Waffensammlung in in uh, Vienna also. It's a huge repository of civic munitions armor. So all those places would be really great. I would do a tour, a grand tour. Awesome. Well, I hope someday you can. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And then switching gears a little bit, what is your favorite tradition in Antir? Oh, favorite tradition? Yeah. Hands, hands down, it's it's the it's the uh, it's the knighting ceremony. It's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing. I think it's uh, I think it's it's one of the things that made an impact on my mind, my my heroic imagination as a young person, and it's still still a, a, a lovely thing in my mind to this day. It's uh, it's rare that I do not cry at a knighting ceremony. There's just something yeah. about it. Yeah. Almost always, right? It's yep. just it's it's just a meaningful thing, and we're we're all sharing that. So it's kind of cool. Do you feel like you got some of that when you got laurels? Absolutely. You, yeah. Good. Yeah. I was surrounded by friends, and I, I, I still remember remember all their faces to this day, and. I'm, I'm so happy that they shared that day with me. You know, I remember Trigvi. I remember, uh, I remember Marco. I remember all these friends, Bodica. Um, they were all there and it was really wonderful to have them share that day with me. And I, I was touched that they participated and I was, I'm still, I'm still touched by it to this day. It was a wonderful thing. Awesome. Is there um, a special piece of regalia that you received that? Um, you know what? Uh, Ugo made me a, a, a lovely piece of Lange Connect garb. I still have it. I still wear it every once in a while. It's great. I love it. Um, he also, there's also this little, this little guy, sort of a. Oh, there it is. Sort of a little token. Just a little oh, rose, yeah. a little silver rose. That was a little memento from the day, and uh, yeah, the the medallion that I had, it's long since expired from me <laughs> from traveling around so much. But <laughs> yeah, I have I, I have a few mementos. I have the sight token from that day from that event. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um. And then the last question is, um, who would you like to see interviewed next? Who would you like to learn more about? Who would I like to learn more about? Oh, there's so many people. Who have you, who have you interviewed so far? A lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people? <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I would, I would, I would say since I just held some of his, some of his masterful work, if you could get Duke Torgel. Duke Torgel Steingrimson. Get Steingrim on there too. I don't know. So we or, we we did interview Steingrim and um, my sister is going to interview Torgel uh, with her Ducal interviews. So oh, okay. That that is coming. So you okay. can look forward so I, to that. I would suggest a tag team supreme since he's an artist too. You need to <laughs> you need to you need to slide in slide in your 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 five questions to her. I need to get in girl. there. Yeah, you do. <laughs> That's my two bits. That's my two bits. Well, she wanted it on this one. She wanted to interview you as well, but um, she wasn't feeling well today, so she she begged out. But okay. um, she is a big fan of yours. Well, I'm a big fan too. I, I've done work for her too, haven't I? Yeah, I think you yeah, have. I made I made her a wonderful shield boss that I have yet to see. Uh oh. <laughs> it's such a, it's such a cool shield. That shield is that shield hung in my shop, and it. It pulled the room together. Oh, sounds it. like it sounds it. like you need a painted shield. Oh, that shield was so good. It was <laughs> so good. Oh my gosh. You know, I have to tell you that another piece of your artwork um, is a day I, I use it daily. Um, do you remember painting the shield walls 
for stock smears. I think it was like <gasps> Sharpie art. It, I might have, yes. What What do you use? Well, we made our chicken coop out of it. <laughs> no. Yay for reuse. <laughs> so every time I go to open my, my chicken coop, I, I touch your artwork. <laughs> I'll send you a picture of it. It's awesome. It, that sounds perfect. I, I we, we all used to mockingly call the eagle that was on that shield a chick. <laughs> well, perfect. it houses chickens now, so. <laughs> it's a perfect fit. It's a perfect fit. That's awesome. Fun. Well, Vrin, thank you so much for your time. Ashoxy, thank you very much. Yep. And um, I, uh, Rifkin and I, tomorrow night, are interviewing um, Duchess Lutviga. Um, and she was my Laurel and um, she's awesome. So that's going to be super fun. And next week um, I'm interviewing Gwen the Potter and uh, Misty and I are interviewing um, Casca. So that's what's on the, on the docket. Wonderful. I look forward to those. They're great. They'll, they'll be great. Yeah. Thanks again, Bren. Good Thank night, everybody. Again. Bye.